Adam22 and T Row and AD. So, this is a quick one to talk about. This is courtesy of the channel called Chicks Move. And to be fair, I have to give Adam22 props. He has completely dunked on these guys' heads. He's dunked on their heads. He's really fucking dunked on their heads, rubbed these fucking balls in their face, and they can't do anything about it. If you don't need the update, basically, they've been all going back and forth for a while, sending loads of shots at each other and subs and whatnot. And they got to a point where I guess Adam22 just had enough and just basically went low, right? He basically said, look, I'm just going to go low and just kind of loop this whole shit. So he essentially, in, in his, I guess his own way, revealed that T-Rail from back on fig is in immense amount of debt i think he's in like 2.5 million dollars worth of debt or something right like crazy amounts and most of it has to do with his company or his brand last kings he did with tiger back in the day but it's crazy so basically all the whole facade of how they are as a family isn't all this cracked up to be right they've got debts and shit and we all should have known that as fans of the show and the Jerry extent no jump extended universe because of the whole GoFundMe when T Rail and his um girl um store I forgot the name of it when it got um flooded that time in LA they put up a GoFundMe and a lot of fans myself included were a bit miffed like why are they putting up a GoFundMe when they when they drive Lambo trucks and they're in Ferraris and wearing Gucci all day, like you know they're doing the whole LA with rich kind of family sort of shit why are they asking fans for like money to repair a roof like don't you you shouldn't have that money I mean it was weird anyway we kind of looked past it because you know they're in a moment of need but then obviously Adam revealed that thing then the second thing he revealed that was fucking crazy <laughs> he revealed that allegedly t Rowe's wife or no t Rowe's mother of his children um, the girl that he's with um, Heather um, may have been an escort back in the day they found her old profile I think it was like yellow something and um, her old profile where she was you know advertising her services on this platform of like being a sugar baby and also other services and shit like early internet stuff right it wasn't even like an app it was like some internet website or whatever maybe so she was in on this early and people kind of saw this and the reason why this is a big deal is because those guys ADT Rail and the guys that left No Jumper, they made a really big deal and kind of were, you know, taking the piss out of Adam22 when his wife, Lena, did that whole cucking video thing with the guy, um, Jason Love. So they made a big deal out of it. So when he then found out that T, you know, T Rail's, you know, girl, wifey, may have been in school allegedly back in the day that was a nuclear bomb so since then they've not said a single word and i guess adam 22 decided to go on this clip and you know celebrate what happened and this is his response at a time it's a bit it's a bit old but i'll just play it for you anyway like kev interview about two and a half weeks ago and uh prior to that i had been listening to all these former hosts just trash me for like five months whole room full of gangsters let me know that they were going to hurt me. They were going to run down on me, wound my family, kill people in my family. All these crazy threats. Gang, gang. Gang, gang. And all I had to do was let them know that I wasn't scared. Haven't heard a peep since. And then you got other people who I really had love for and really held down for years and years. Never had a bad word to say about them. But they were talking about my relationship for months and months and months just acting as if they had so many opinions and as soon as it comes out that certain people got a history in sex work other people are in millions of dollars worth of debt now they don't have anything to say about me even though i've been popping my shit way worse than ever before now so again the first part of this kind of clip is a little bit policey that's the thing I, i've never really liked about adam and i think um it's always kind of irked me and I've, even sometimes a bit with kanye as well like they love to like speak recklessly about people and then when people you know usually with guys there's only a limit you know to how much back and forth we can do verbally it gets to a point where we're gonna want to fight right especially if you have an argument somebody you don't like you're just gonna settle it with just you know fighting whatever it may be and he's always been scared to do that and that first bit of like, oh, they want to ruin my family. Don't get me wrong. Those guys were sending some veiled threats, but it sounds a bit policey, right? Every time he kind of talks about, you know, getting into a physical altercation, he always kind of dumbs that. Like, he always kind of um, poo poos it like, oh, that's beneath him. Why would I fight anybody, right? So he doesn't mind antagonizing, doesn't mind, you know, um, you know, firing back and getting into the back and forths, but he just thinks it should be just back and forths and content all the time. Some people just don't play like that. Some people, you know, they don't play content games. They don't play back and forth over the internet. Some people just want to fight. It just is what it is. And I think as a guy, if you get into that sort of murky waters of like insulting people and saying what you want to say, 
you should be willing to, you know, to bear the consequences of it. But he doesn't want to. He kind of was one of those people that, you know, just picks and choose. It's really strange how he acts. So I'm not really fond of that. But I have to give him a lot of credit. He did sustain a lot of blows. Like he was really taking it from all angles. Like, you know, myself included, I don't really watch No Jumper anymore since the whole breakup. It's not really the same anymore. I don't really watch the other shows either. But he was getting it a lot from everybody, all angles, because essentially everyone blamed him for the downfall of No Jumper, which is essentially still his fault because he's the boss. But there's a lot of context to it, a lot of nuance to it and shit. And overall, he only finally started defending himself at the end. I think when he realized that no jumper wasn't really failing, I think there was maybe a little fear that he had that he actually did fumble and it was never going to come back. But obviously, you know, with content games out with the content, with the content industry, the way it is at the moment, the content scene, I've seen the way I see it is that I noticed it with the Joe Budden thing. I stopped listening to a Joe Budden podcast because just personally, I just couldn't stand hearing Joe Budden's voice anymore. After all that nonsense that happened with Rory Moore, just annoying hearing any of any the side talk anymore. I just kind of was over it. But I know a lot of people who don't really watch a lot of shit, right? They don't really have a lot of content to kind of consume. So the content they do have, they're not going to let that go easily, right? Like if you're willing to put out you know, free pieces of free shows a week. <clears throat> There's going to be a fan base that are going to be willing to consume it. Doesn't matter if it's good or bad. The same reason why the fire and the kid is still around because they're just fans there. Just don't have anything else to replace. You know, have f- two three hours of content every single week. So I think when Adam realized that <clears throat> no jumper was going to be okay without those guys, it wouldn't be as popular, but it'll be okay. I think that's when he started to like let his nuts hang. So I give him credit for that. The only thing that's really funny, you have to kind of look at the t Ron AD guys are a bit funny because since he said this, they've all gone mute. And I think there's a video going viral now on the, on the Reddit of like, um, Keem, one of the other guys, you know, associated with back on fig and t Rail, basically admitting that t Rail told them specifically, don't talk about what Adam has basically divulged or exposed. Don't mention the debt thing on your show. Don't talk about my girl and her history, maybe of sex work and stuff. Don't mention it. So that's why I don't like it anymore because they were firing shots at him. They were taking the piss out of his wife, getting cucked and shit. They were, you know what I mean? They were talking crazy on him the whole time. And now he's fired back and it's, it's getting a bit close to home. Now they don't want to talk anymore. You know what I mean, that's the only thing I'm not really a big fan of anymore. Like they don't really want to address it and play those kind of games because obviously it's really embarrassing because, you know, you're insulting this guy for being involved in the porn industry. And then here's your girl that's doing exactly the same thing. Um, I don't really know how you grade it. I don't really give a fuck really, but that's the whole thing to talk about that. So um, in general, I think personally, I still blame Adam for the whole demise. I still think it was avoidable. I think it was a stupid how it all kind of played out. My theory is fundamentally Adam just couldn't get a handle on how to deal with the other guys, other platforms outside of No Jumper. I think it was just time to get to him, but he didn't know how to handle it because he couldn't rein it in. It was too late. They were already blowing up and having their own thing. It was kind of hard to rein it in. And also I think fundamentally as well, the guy's a founder. He's obviously a visionary in one way with no jumper. I think he kind of to give the guy credit for that. And, you know, this influence on hip hop and the SoundCloud era and all that malarkey and just, you know, it just being a platform that doesn't exist in any other way. There's no other no jumper out there, really. So it kind of serves that that, that kind of purpose. But I think he's an amazing founder, a, a visionary in his own right. But I, also, but I don't think he's a good manager. He's a horrible manager. Like maybe he's a good businessman and a leader in that reg- No, a bis- an operator in that regard, maybe. But as a people person, as a manager of people, he is terrible. Like he's a his communications, he no, he's a his communication skills are terrible. Um, the lack of accountability, personal responsibility, leadership, um, direct all that stuff is just not there. He's just not a good leader. And I think that's the fundamental issue. He wasn't able to communicate with his employees or his host. You know what, where he stood, what his problems were you know, figure out a solution and kind of go from there. And then it kind of divulged how it kind of divulged the way it went down. Because I still believe fundamentally, you can't go talking about other employees when you're the boss to other employees. It's just not on. That's just completely unprofessional. doesn't matter if you're saying good things to them. You just can't be talking about your other employees to other employees. It just doesn't make any sense. It's always going to, it's always going to be received badly by the person that's been spoken about you know personally it just was a weird way to go about things even though he spoke to them personally about i know blah blah but i think in general that's how it 